Good morning, North Ranger here, bringing you 10 quick tips to getting started in Warband. We're talking newbie tips, things that if you haven't played the game before, you might not know yet. These tips apply to both console versions and PC native module. So jumping right into it, when you're making your character, you have a lot of decisions to make, and a lot of different things that you can click on here, some of which will affect your character in unforeseen ways. Some of them are self-explanatory, choosing your father's profession and whatnot, but uh, some of them might affect you in ways that you might not expect. Uh, there's going to be a link in the description that uh, will take you to a page that will show you exactly what each choice will do to your character. Swapping weapons. It's important to know how to swap your weapons on the fly and how to order them in your inventory to be the most effective warrior that you can be. Just because you're carrying around a bow or a crossbow and you think you're going to use it first in any battle that you're in, doesn't mean you should have it at the top. There are little events sometimes when you enter villages or try to do something in town. Once you've got a bit of a renown and you have some enemies, they'll actually send criminals after you and you'll get ambushed in these towns. So if you have a ranged weapon on your first slot at the top of your inventory, you may not be able to defend yourself as quickly when you get attacked by these guys up close. On the subject of inventory, we're talking about shields now, and shields are the only thing you're going to be able to block uh, enemy arrows or any ranged projectile with. In Warband, your shield will also break, uh, so it's not a bad idea to carry two shields. You can keep one on your back while you have one on your arm, then when that one breaks, you can just swap to a new one. Warband melee fighting is one of the highlights of the series. Basically choose which way to swing your weapon by how you're moving the mouse or the analog stick if you're playing on consoles. While you're choosing what direction to strike from, you also need to be moving. You need to keep your enemies at the ideal range for your weapon. You need to get to know what weapon you have. If it's a one-handed sword, then you're going to be able to hit people from a certain distance. And depending on what they have, you might need to get closer than they want you to be. Make sure you use footwork to your advantage. Create some distance between your enemies and you. If they have shorter weapon reaches than you do, hit them from your ideal range. Each weapon in Warband has a different damage type. You can see represented here in your inventory. There's a number and a letter after it. Uh, B is for blunt, C for cutting, P for piercing. Blunt is great for taking prisoners. It'll knock people out if you manage to kill somebody with a blunt strike, and it's good against armor. Piercing, similarly, is really good against armor, but it's going to kill the people. If you do kill them, you won't be able to capture them. Cutting, uh, most cutting weapons, you're going to find they swing relatively quickly. If it's an axe type weapon, it's going to be really good against shields as well, so it's going to be able to break your enemy shields and keep them from blocking you as effectively. Cutting damage in general is not very good against armored opponents. It's a good idea to carry a bow or a crossbow when you're first starting off your character. It helps you stay out of the fight until the last few enemies are left because in Warband if your character gets knocked out the rest of the battle is going to get auto calculated and a lot of your troops are going to die that probably wouldn't if you just stayed alive and let them fight the enemy. You can stay at the back ranks of your troops and if you are mounted just sit on your horse, fire a couple of volleys of arrows or bolts towards the enemies and then have your infantry charge them. Your troops are normally divided by infantry, archer, and cavalry. There are custom ways that you can group your soldiers beyond this, uh, but you can also reassign your soldiers to uh, different types, depending on what other types of troops you want them to be grouped up with. So for instance, if you take a Swadian militia and you set them up as archers, then they're going to stay near your other archers in battle. Swadian militia can spawn with a whole bunch of different weapons, one of which is a crossbow. So if you have them grouped with the rest of the archers, you're not going to have to worry about those ones getting into melee distance with the enemy. Be careful early on. Too many soldiers in your party is going to slow you down on the world map. Same thing with inventory slots. If you're carrying too much around with you, it's going to make your party slower, you're going to be easier to catch, and you're going to be easy prey for any bandits or enemy lords that you see. In terms of beginner quests, things like clearing out bandit lairs, delivering messages to other lords, training villagers to defend themselves, and even collecting taxes from villages or cities is a real good help early on in the game. It'll help with your reputation with that faction that you're working for, it'll increase your renown, and you're going to get some money out of it. Mercenary contracts, on the other hand, probably not a very good idea until you are fairly established. It's going to give you the same faction relations as the faction that hires you. So if they're at war with somebody, all those lords are going to be hostile to you now. It gives you a contract, and at the end of that contract, it will notify you and ask you if you want to renew it or not. Keep in mind, the faction relations may be temporary, but personal relations are permanent. If you raid somebody's village, or if you take out a lord in this time, he is still going to hate you afterwards, even though you aren't a mercenary anymore. There you go, 10 tips for getting started in Mountain Blade Warband. These all apply to the console version of the game as well as the native module on PC. If you have any questions about these tips, Warband in general, or you're having trouble with other parts of the game, let me know in the comments and I'll help you out as best as I can. Uh, thanks for watching everyone, and until next time, I'll see you in the field. Uh -huh.